you ever been sitting after a terrifying horror film and wondered what makes this film so scary? Well, according to therapist Rigo, there are several elements in these films that make them the way they are, and most importantly is suspense and anticipation. It involves instilling fear that something horrific will happen, but not knowing when or how. To be able to create the anticipation, the design mise-en-scene of the color palette and lighting plays an absolute crucial role. You will also see how the director Ari Astar was able to get away with contradicting lighting and color in his movie Midsommar. According to the color wheel in horror movies, red represents the most dangerous because it can mean a variety of things such as anger, violence and blood. It is used alongside the antagonist to portray them as a threat, while the protagonist is the victim of whatever is to come. In the film Insidious, Red fills the set tone for the chain series of events in the demon's lair. Next is green, a popular color in horror because it dissipates decay and death, a gross and sick sensation. This is shown in the film Beetlejuice, when a character has a deformed face while being backlit by strong colors of green. When discussing lighting, most of the gruesome scenes in horror films are usually set at night in the dark. The audience are terrified by shadows and mysterious human shapes since they are unable to identify them. An example of how lighting may be used is underexposure. As shown in The Conjuring, the light in the frame is adequate to fully reveal the protagonist, but due to the intense underexposure, we don't notice the antagonist until it's too late. <coughs> A fantastic shock element. The next technique is spotlight, in which light is shined on whatever lurks in the shadows, which is a wonderful jump scare for viewers. When introducing the antagonist Caitlin in Grave Encounter 2, we observe the use of a spotlight, which is exaggerated by stretching the scene and making the only thing centered on her the light from the flashlight. However, there is a film that clearly contradicts the traditional use of lighting and color, known as Midsommar, a 2019 horror thriller film directed by Ari Astar that looks at a pagan cult mentality and our protagonist's emotional journey to emancipation. Yellow and white are the primary colors utilized. Yellow here represents a young person who must be sacrificed. This is seen in the Yellow Sacrificing Building, where a number of people get sacrificed. the yellow flowers gathered by Danny and given to Kristen, foreshadowing her decision to sacrifice him. White represents the distinctiveness of our characters. This is especially noticeable when Danny is named May Queen, with Kristen being the only one wearing darker clothes, showing us that he doesn't belong into the cult. Examining lighting, the shots are overexposed, with sunshine continually peeping through as if we were going about with the sun in our eyes unable to see well. The lens flares assist to reinforce what we already know, while the characters can't see what's about to happen to them. This long daytime in the sunshine is also employed figuratively to throw the protagonists out of their element. They get increasingly bewildered as they drift further away from reality and more thoroughly into the isolationism of the cult. The bright color scheme and overexposed lighting confirms that we have nothing to hide while facing the cult's violence, like the bashed face and skull. Aster makes us wish there were darkness to save us from seeing the gore. All in all, we understood the traditional usage of lighting and color in horror films and how they help the audience understand the sort of message being sent by the film. <laughs> also saw how in Midsommar, Aster was able to completely oppose these traditions and still end up with a movie that is in my opinion one of the most unsettling films I've ever watched. <laughs>